Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Crimpton News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. And I'm Whitney Ward. So the verdict is in. A Cheney man accused of killing his wife with poisoned ice cream was found guilty by a jury today. Amanda Rowley was in the courtroom when he learned his fate. Amanda, what was the reaction in the courtroom when that guilty verdict was read? Really instantly, that reaction was shock and disbelief. So late this afternoon, the Spokane jury reached that verdict and found David Pettis guilty of killing his wife, Peggy. And he did that by lacing her ice cream back in 2018 with a lethal amount of prescription drugs. And when the judge read the verdict, you could just feel the shock in the room. In fact, I saw Pettis slump down in disbelief. The niece of the victim, Peggy Pettis, spoke with us after the verdict. Could Katrina Mabe says she and her family felt relief with the jury's decision, but she told me no matter what the outcome would have been, it was not going to be easy for her family. This is a very rough time for our family. Dave was a part of our family for 35 years. We are relieved that there's a resolution and we hope that our family can now go forward with healing. Now, right after the judge left the courtroom, Pettis's daughter, Elizabeth Culp, rushed to hug her father. She insists David Pettis is not guilty of murdering her mother. Elizabeth says she believes this because she lived with her parents and saw her mother take hydrocodone on the weekends. I feel awful. I feel even more awful than I did before. Because I know that my dad didn't kill her. And it certainly wasn't premeditated. Now, David Pettis is now in custody at Spokane County Jail. His sentencing is scheduled for later this month on January 12th. Reporting from the Spokane County Courthouse, Amanda Rowley, Crime 2 News. Spokane police are asking for your help in finding a missing man. Yeah, take a look. The 74 year old was last seen in the 3100 block of division near Pounders Jewelry. So Dwayne Lysico, he goes by Dewey, has a medical condition which police say can make him easily confused and vulnerable. He was last seen wearing a military veteran baseball hat, a forest green jacket, blue jeans and a walking cane. He's five foot eight, about weighs about 185 pounds. If you see police, they ask you to call 911 and keep Keep him in sight until first responders are able to arrive. And no! Undisputed USC Bantamweight Champion of the World, Juliana Nunez Highland Victor. Well, it is a good day to be a UFC fan in Spokane. Spokane is known nationally mm -hmm. as a UFC fight town and now finally got its well-deserved USC moment. It's pretty incredible. So Mount Spokane High School grad Juliana Pena beat huge mm. odds in one of the greatest upsets in UFC history. She beat out Amanda Nunez to claim that UFC bantam weight title. So Nunez, listen to this, held that title belt since 2016. She has been undefeated for the last seven years until now, of course. Yeah, so talks of a rematch have already started. Right now, though, Pena says she's ready for that rematch anytime they want to schedule on. Until then, though, she is going to enjoy the win and spend time with her daughter. We actually had a chance to speak with Juliana today about this just incredible win. I'm grateful. I, I'm just, you know, very um, humbled by the experience. And, and I'll, honestly, all I can say is, you know, I knew it. I, I said I was going to do it and I did it. And so I'm just very proud, very happy. So there has already been chatter, as we said, about a rematch. We asked her about that today. She said she's up for fighting again, but again, just wants to enjoy the moment. She was a champ for so long. She was a dominant champion for over seven years. I definitely think that a rematch is on the horizon. But right now, I just kind of want to bask in this moment, just enjoy my belt and, and just enjoy this time that I've worked so hard for. I want to enjoy the fruits of my labor, take my daughter on vacation, and then definitely she can have a rematch later on in the future. Absolutely. I told you, don't ever doubt me again. I got nothing to prove, you know, I got nothing to prove. Everybody was sleeping on me and I, I, I uh, shook up the world and, and I did what I said that I was going to do. But at the end of the day, I'm not surprised. You know, I know that I have a 
big, huge will and determination. And, and I've been saying it all week long. The world is your oyster. You can literally do anything that you want in this life. You have the ability to do anything that you want in this life. Well, this win is a major upset as sports betting odds had Pena's chances to win at plus 650. That makes the uh, that marks that being the second biggest women's title upset in UFC history behind Holly Holmes upset of Ronda Rousey. Wow. Champion of the world has a pretty oh good ring to it, doesn't gosh, it? Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> We've talked to her before. I mean, yeah. she really, she never doubted herself, which is no. so incredible. Yeah, and her Twitter posts have been, uh, yeah. she has one about Zac Efron. I mean, did you see that <laughs> no. one? Where she's walking up into the, before the fight, just, you know, with that look. Yeah, yeah. And he's just looking at her like this, and she <laughs> says, every woman needs to have a dude look at you like that. <laughs> Something to that effect. It was She's fabulous. right. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, congratulations to her, and I hope that we hear from her again. And gosh, we just, All this is just the beginning. All hard work, just sweat oh, in the gym. Isn't that the truth? And while everyone else is out playing yep. she's in there working hard wow well, well done all right let's switch gears let's talk about weather kind of peaceful out there right sure. now but it sounds like this is kind of an interesting week yeah well we're definitely going to be more of a winter week you know we kind of dodged the bullet last friday night into saturday i thought we'd get a couple of inches of snow but we never got cold enough for it we did get the very strong winds now we have that winter weather advisory in effect through tomorrow late morning tuesday at 11 o'clock not in spokane but everywhere you see shaded in blue and really it's in the mountains at least uh, east of spokane above 3,000 feet could get another four to seven inches of snow so more great snow for the ski resorts and then up in the Okanagan Highlands parts of central Washington could see one to three inches of snow actually fall in the lower elevations in the valleys again that's through tomorrow and then more snow is on the way midweek and then into the weekend 36 right now that's the uh, current temperature so we're above freezing so we're going to start out with a little bit of rain tonight and then we could even see a little bit of light snow for us here in the Spokane area if I have to go with an accumulation I would suspect it would be like less than a half inch of snow so shouldn't be a major problem, but you can see all that rain down there in the lower Columbia Basin. And again, that's all rotating up towards us. So it's rain early on and then a low of 30 tonight, 36 the expected high tomorrow. Central Washington most likely will see partly cloudy skies. We'll look for partly to mostly cloudy. Should be mostly dry on your Tuesday. And then we'll look for more showers developing Wednesday and especially Friday night into the weekend. And the daytime highs and overnight lows support snowfall. So look for moderate amounts of snow Friday night into Saturday morning, lingering into Sunday, then a little clearing in the afternoon, and it's not a very warm day. A high of only 33 and a low of 24. So we'll check the rest of that seven day forecast for you coming up in just about 10 minutes. All right, sounds good, Tom. Thank you. Well, our ongoing Boomtown series is focused on the rapid growth here in our area, as well as the stress and the opportunities that often come with it. Yeah, so today we are hearing from a group of real estate and policy experts. They released their recommendations for tackling Spokane's housing crisis. The Counselors of Real Estate's report calls on the city to consider more types of housing and also evaluate lot sizes. One real estate expert called Spokane the city of single family households. According to the report, 0.5% of Spokane's new housing over the last decade was attached, was attached housing like duplexes or tri, uh, triplexes. Now another suggestion they have is to repurpose more buildings downtown to try and transform some of the vacant high rise buildings or even parking structures into new housing. Right now, uh, I'm afraid developers are largely correct. There is no land on which they can build uh, the kind of units people need. However, there's plenty of land if you look at it in a different way. So the report also is urging the city to hire more staff focused on housing, including a planning director. Yeah, the council plans on hosting interviews for a director of planning this coming Friday. Well, protesters are back outside Spokane City Hall demanding that the city open more low barrier shelters. So a similar protest, as you may know, took place back in 2018. That's where police cleared out that tent city camp and arrested two people. This time about 70 tents are set up right near City Hall. And according to the homeless advocacy group, Jules Helping Hands, they claim the city scrambles every year at this time to open a warming shelter once temperatures drop in the winter. But they say they have plenty of money to do so or Organizer Julie Garcia says they actually can no longer stand quietly by watching people suffering because of the city's inaction. These guys are dying out here. We are not sure how to address this. We've tried doing it every means necessary. We've sent emails. We've come down here. We've talked to people, but it doesn't. No one seems to pay attention until they actually have to see homelessness. 
So right now the city of Spokane says the shelter system is not full over the past three nights. About 90 to 100 beds they say have been available at those low barrier shelters. The city says they are continuing to monitor the situation though to ensure the health and safety of all and to maintain access to nearby businesses as well. No timeline though has been set to move all those tents. Well, Creme 2 is co-hosting Christmas at the Mac this year. In just a few minutes, we'll be joined by our Creme 2 holiday expert. You know that. That's Laura Papetti. She'll tell us everything you need to know for this year's celebration. First, though, ribbon skirts have been used for centuries to express pride in Native American culture. We'll have more on that when we come back. Identity, solidarity, they bring unity within our community. We had a chance to catch up with a couple of locals who explained how they originated and have adapted through the years. Creme 2 News will be right back.